Hey, what's up guys? Matt here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. So yesterday was Harley-Davidson's 2022 model year global launch where they announced all their brand new stuff, their new models for the 22 model year. They titled it Further and Faster and I think we know now the relevance of the title. They released a lot of performance oriented bikes in the lowrider lineup and in the touring as well that we're gonna get into here in just a minute. So early in January, they started rolling out a lot of their 22 model year bikes that didn't necessarily receive a lot of changes to them. I covered that in a video that I launched two weeks ago. I'm going to link that in the upper right hand corner if you want to check out that video if you haven't already. That is the bulk of the bikes but yesterday is when Harley Davidson announced their newest, latest, and greatest and so I'm going to cover that in detail. I know a lot of you guys already watched the launch yesterday with myself. I was chatting with a bunch of you guys in live chat yesterday so thank you for all the kind words and comments and uh, it, was, it was fun checking it out. This is always my favorite time of year when Harley Davidson releases the new bike bikes for the new model year. So in this video, I'm going to cover the new stuff, mostly just the stuff that was covered in the, the launch yesterday. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions. I'm going to be covering some of the most frequently asked questions that I've already seen arising in chat boxes and in comment sections and on Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. All right, guys, so let's just jump right into the good stuff. I want to start off with what I felt like was the star of the show, the bike that is getting by far the most buzz and the most talked about, and I feel like is really the best thing that we've seen out of the 20 22 model year so far, and that is the Lowrider ST. ST standing for Sport Touring. So the Lowrider ST is a touring version of the ever popular Lowrider S. So you've got saddlebags on there. These saddlebags were seen on the Sport Glide. The Sport Glide was first introduced halfway through the 18 model year. So that bike has now been discontinued, but the bags have not been discontinued. You've got those on the Lowrider ST now. And then you've got the modern version of an F. FXRT fairing on this bike as well, which Honestly, guys, this was the element of this bike that I knew was either going to make or break the model, and I think Harley Davidson nailed it on the fairing. I've been reading a lot of comments about what people's thoughts are, and the majority of them at this point, I think, is, are very positive. But Harley Davidson, I think, did a very good job at making a modern version that still has some retro elements that pays homage to the FXRT fairing that I think was very, very important. You know, in, in the custom world, world in the aftermarket world we've seen a lot of aftermarket companies creating these fxrt fairings you know where people are bolting them up to their their dynas or their modern soft tails and so this is a style that our dealership in particular has definitely done a lot of custom work and built bikes like this and so to see harley davidson take note and to make it from the factory and to do it Harley Davidson's way and to bring back a style and a fairing that started with Project Nova a long time ago in the 80s. It's very cool to see it come full circle and to have now a modern version that's been wind tunnel tested and it has modern lines to it and everything. So in my opinion, the Lowrider ST is the, definitely the shining star of the show. I'm very, very anxious to get my first ride and review on this bike. So make sure to hit that subscribe button on my channel because I will be doing a full test ride and review on the Lowrider ST in the near future. You can get this bike in two colors. It comes in vivid black and also comes in the super popular gunship gray. I think both look phenomenal. Me personally, I'd probably get it in the gunship gray. Honestly, if I wasn't such a daddy long legs, I'd probably buy this bike. This thing is freaking awesome. I love it. But because of my height, I'm pretty much pigeonholed into the touring chassis family, which is okay because I love touring bikes as well, but I'm just super excited about the Lowrider ST. A couple questions I've seen get asked a lot already. Price as you see here, starts at $21,749. That's for a black one. Then you add $450 if you want the gunship gray one. I will say that Harley Davidson upped their freight a little bit this year and they still have the surcharge that came about like halfway through last model year. The freight on the soft tails now is $500 and the surcharge right now is $600. So not only did Harley Davidson come out with what I think is going to be a home run bike, but they really got it at a very enticing price point as well. When the rumor mill started on this bike and the leaked photos started emerging, a lot of people were predicting that this was going to be like 24, 25, 26 or something like that. When I first saw it, I was really hoping that it was going to be between 22 and 23, you know, right there, like right around like where a street glide standard would be, or maybe a little bit less than a street glide standard. And then for it to come out under $22,000, I was like, wow, this is a very good value here. We're 
we're talking about $3,400 over a Lowrider S. Speaking from experience from our service department and customizing a lot of Lowrider S's to resemble this style of a bike, you're going to spend a heck of a lot more than $3,400 in putting an aftermarket fairing on there and bags and have them all painted and looking like this. So you know, you're easily going to pay double the $3,400 in doing something like that. So having it all from the factory, color match, the fit and finish and everything is a very nice value to get. There is a speaker pod system that's like a direct bolt on to the inner fairing here. That does not come with the bike. It's a thousand bucks. It's offered out of the PA catalog. So a thousand bucks, you get a speaker system. It is Bluetooth. There's no switches or controls that it comes with. It's all Bluetooth. And some of the functionality is performed through Harley Davidson's audio app. Also, the suspension on this bike is different. So this model year, they changed the shock out of both the Lowrider S and the Lowrider ST. It's a taller shock this year. So with that, you have a little bit more travel in the rear suspension. You went from 43 millimeters of travel to 56 millimeters of travel in the rear shock, which translates to about a half inch of travel, which, which then translates to about a full inch of wheel movement travel. You get an extra 1.3 degrees of lean angle on the bike as well. The Lowrider ST has a different front suspension tune when you compare it to the Lowrider S. So you have more weight up there, and so the Harley Davidson engineers tune the front suspension differently. The Lowrider S front shock is the same as it was last year. So the Lowrider S just got that lengthened rear shock. Lowrider ST, you've got this really clean center console. You've got an LCD screen up there on your bar clamp at the top of your risers, much like the Street Bob has. I'm guessing it's probably the same thing as the Street Bob. I can't confirm that though. It looks like it's the same as the Street Bob LCD digital gauge up there. And I don't want to forget either, the Lowrider ST comes with Harley Davidson's 117 cubic inch Milwaukee 8, which is the largest engine that is offered from the factory. You're now up there on par with a CVO, which I have mixed feelings about. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So another question that I've been seeing coming up a lot is a lot of people want to know if on their 20 model year to their 2021 model year Lowrider S, if they can retrofit this fairing to fit their previous model year Lowrider S's. And the answer is no. So there's a couple different reasons. I guess the front forks are different and the triple trees are different. Even in the 22 model year, there is those differences. Then you have the differences in suspension as well. So there's just too many additional secondary costs associated with retrofitting this fairing to Lowrider S models. And so for that reason, Harley Davidson's official response to that question is no, you cannot put the ST fairing on the Lowrider S motorcycles. So now let's move over to the Lowrider S. The Lowrider S had some pretty significant changes this model year, the biggest probably being that same engine bump moved up from a 114 to a 117. We're now on par with the CVO motorcycles. You've also got a gauge relocation. So in previous model years, you had the gauges on the center console. Those have now been removed and relocated to the top of the handlebar clamp. It gives you a little bit more of a heads up feel, definitely more of a race inspired setup where you have your gauges and your line of sight a little bit more readily available. This relocating the gauges up to the handlebars was definitely something that we saw commonly in the custom world as well. In the last five over six years, we've seen this huge shift that I think was motivated a lot by the club scene dyno world and these guys that are spending a lot of their customization dollars on performance based parts and accessories. I feel like the changes on the Lowrider S this year and the Lowrider ST, a lot of those changes were inspired by this scene and this culture of rider that are taking these mid sized Harley Davidson motorcycles and building them out with performance as a high priority. Like I said before, the Lowrider S did get the taller shock in the rear, which is going to translate to about an additional in of range of motion in the rear wheel movement. The actual travel on the spring going from a 43 millimeter to a 56 millimeter range of travel on the actual spring. Like I said, these two models really are the highlight for me for this model year, the ST especially. Yesterday, the first day that they were announced, I think we took six deposits. And so the demand for this bike is gonna be very, very high. My prediction is if you want one, you should probably talk to your local dealer, leave a deposit or do whatever you gotta do to get on the list or whatever to get one of these bikes. I doubt if we will ever see these bikes hit the showroom floor because they will all be pre-sold. Mark my words, the Lowrider ST is going to be one of the best selling Harley Davidsons that we've seen in probably the last decade. And the Lowrider S's popularity is just going to be perpetuated even more with the bigger motor now. I think the gauge relocation and the center console change is just going to be a nice added bonus touch. And that shock in the rear, I think is just one more thing to show that Harley Davidson is really in touch with the riders of these types of bikes are really looking for. So let's jump into what I would consider the second most exciting piece 
piece of news in the model launch yesterday. To set the stage and introduce these next two bikes, they talked about Harley Davidson's huge victory this last year in the King of the Baggers race in Moto America. For those of you who aren't watching and paying attention, a couple years ago, Moto America decided to open up a new class to full-size baggers. So you got your Indians, you got your Harley Davidsons out there duking it out on tracks like Laguna Seca. It's been really entertaining and you got a fresh set of eyeballs watching these races now. So they'll be adding even more races to the circuit in this calendar year. The first year Indian won, this last year Harley Davidson came back and won. So they're duking it out. It's pretty dang entertaining. If you guys haven't checked it out, you should definitely do that. I recently sat down and did a couple of podcasts with Rob Bidos, Alex Fox, and the guys from Alloy Art. I'll link those videos in the upper right hand corner if you want to hear from some of the guys that started the entire thing. Since the King of the Baggers started, a group of the original riders branched out and are now doing their own thing. It's called Bagger Racing League. Anyways, the sport's getting really popular. And as a result, Harley Davidson decided to produce two factory baggers that are inspired by the King of the Baggers and really have the makings to either be just a really good fast bike right out of the box or be the perfect platform to go even further and, and do like an all-in performance bagger. So what did Harley Davidson do to quench the huge performance bagger thirst that's going on right now? They made a King of the Baggers inspired version of the Road Glide and the Street Glide. And who better to showcase these two King of the Baggers inspired Road Glide and Street Glide motorcycles than the Wyman brothers. These guys are both professional racers. Kyle Wyman is the man that pilots Harley Davidson's Screaming Eagle Road Glide that won the King of the Baggers this last year. And here they are ripping up PCH. So the two bikes that dropped are the Street Glide ST and the Road Glide ST. Yes, we have yet another version of the Road Glide and the Street Glide. I'm starting to wonder when Harley Davidson's going to come up with some new names because the Road Glide now has more variants than COVID. You've got the Road Glide Standard, the Road Glide Special, the Road Glide ST, the Road Glide Limited, the CVO Road Glide, and the CVO Road Glide Limited this year, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So you've got six different versions of the Road Glide now. So the content of these two bikes is identical. So I'm just going to talk about them basically as a group. As we all know, the Road Glide has the shark nose fairing that's fixed, it's frame mounted, and the Street Glide has the bat wing fairing that is fork mounted, swivels with the steering. Other than that, everything that I'm going to talk about can be applied to either one of these models. So first off, let's talk about the mechanics stuff of the bike. So what you have here is you have the 117 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 in both of these bikes. Yet another two bikes that are bumped up to Harley Davidson's max displacement that comes from the factory right now. The second thing is you have the standard height shock in the rear. As many of you know on the specials you have always had a lowered or a dropped shock to give it that slammed bagger look. On these bikes you have the shock that came historically like on the Road King standard. So if I remember right the specials have always had like a 12 inch shock and the shock that comes on these bikes I believe is the 13 inch shock. As a result you get a little bit more lean angle out of these bikes. You can enter the turns a little bit quicker. Most people are going to experience a little bit better ride comfort as well. I know I certainly do on the taller shock but the big misconception that I've already been seeing is that people think that this comes with the Screaming Eagle Olin's remote reservoir shocks. It does not come with those shocks from the factory. That's a very nice applicable upgrade to apply to this bike but the shock is just Harley Davidson's taller shock that they've been offering for years on other bikes like the Road King Standard. The front forks internals are the exact same on say like the specials in previous model years so there's been no change there. You've got shorter saddlebags on these bikes. You don't want to be running the stretch saddlebags when you're going around the snake on Mulholland. You might scratch your saddlebag or something like that. So we got the shorter bags on there and because you have the shorter bags you also have the shorter fender on there as well. You no longer have the specials rear fender that has that drop down and that trim light at the bottom of the fender. So you have a traditional tail light on there as well as the two bullet turn signals in the rear fascia. You've also got a smaller sleeker front fender as well. Again something that's a little bit more race inspired. You don't have the big large full fender anymore so I suppose there's a little bit of weight savings there. And then you've got some nice styling changes that really sets it apart from the specials and the standards. The styling definitely took a page out of the Lowrider S's book. You've got bronze highlights throughout the bike including the bronze prodigy wheels, bronze highlights on the lower rocker box covers, the graphics on the tank very similar to the Lowrider S. It's got that historic Harley Davidson with the dropped H on there that I think is a really cool touch. And then you got bronze script on things like the heavy breather intake and like the derby cover with the 117 on it. The heavy breather intake I should also probably mention as well. As one of the significant mechanical changes to the bike, you no longer have the ventilator air cleaner like on the special. You've got the snorkel style heavy breather screaming eagle intake on there. Very similar to like what's on the CVO 117. So that's pretty much your Road Glide and Street Glide ST in a nutshell. You got the 117 displacement, a little bit taller shock in the rear, heavy breather intake,
overweight, shorter bags, shorter fender, smaller fender in the front. And then you got Harley Davidson's performance cruiser styling that's in unison with the Lowrider S, which is the bike that, that kind of started the performance cruiser catalyst for Harley Davidson Motor Company back in the 16 model year. Both the Road Glide and the Street Glide ST both come in at $30,000 for the black one. The second color for both of these bikes is the Gunship Gray. You pay an upcharge of $575 if you want the Gunship Gray. So I think the price point is very attractive for this bike. I think these bikes are going to do very well. I personally really like the bikes. I think for an extra $2,500 on top of the Street Glide and Road Glide special, you're getting a pretty awesome bike. But I also think there's some pretty good differentiation between the two. I still think that you're going to have your guys that want the slammed look with the stretched bags of the specials that want to be completely blacked out that maybe don't like the bronze. But the guys that like these several performance touches that Harley Davidson has applied throughout the bike are definitely going to appreciate the ST version of these two bikes. So on to the pinnacle of Harley Davidson products, the CVO lineup. So I think the CVO lineup is pretty interesting this year. I feel like the paint this year definitely got whacked with the boomer stick. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I actually respect the baby boomers generation a lot more than my own generation. But I guess that's my way of trying to be funny and also describe who I feel like Harley Davidson was targeting with a lot of the paint styles that they applied to the CVOs this year. So the CVO motorcycles have always been about the really big and bold and loud paint every year. But I feel like in the 2018 model year, which is personally my favorite year of CVO paint in the history of CVOs, and, and I've seen pretty much every CVO in person, and I've ridden most of them since they started being released back in 1999. But I feel like in 2018 and 2019, those are my personal favorite years of the CVO since the CVO line started. I feel like the paint those years started using a little bit more of like these really nice quality, luxurious solids and paneling paint jobs. And we kind of got away from the skull and flames a little bit. But I think this year, Harley Davidson intentionally brought back kind of that early 2000s and 90s style. I think there were a lot of people that complained maybe about the last four years and they felt like Harley Davidson needs to have that really loud and in your face and flames and crazy paint jobs that we've seen in the past because that's what defines CVOs and they want people to know right away, hey, that's definitely a CVO. Where in the last four years, the paint has been a little bit more subdued. So on paint, it's very hard to please everybody. I think there's always going to be a division with people when it comes to really big and loud and polarizing paint jobs. So with that being said, let's jump into the four models that they're offering this year. So back now for another model year is the street glide and the road glide for the first time in a very long time they do not have the ultra limited with the batwing fairing in the lineup instead they've got the road glide limited in here back i think for the first time since 2016 model year and then you have the cvo trike returning now for a third year in a row so before we jump into the different paint options that are available in the various different models which i think is the biggest change that we've seen in this model year let's take a look at all the significant parts and features on the cvo that really put it ahead and shoulders above the rest of the motorcycles in the Harley-Davidson lineup. So let's start off first with the heart of the motorcycle and the engine. So you got the Milwaukee 8, 117 cubic inches. We've seen the 117 cubic inch since the 2018 model year. My personal opinion, we're long overdue for a displacement bump, especially in light of four other motorcycles that are non-CVOs, all getting the 117 this year with all the ST bikes and the Lowrider S all now at a 117. Personally, I have mixed feelings about this. I think it's really cool that the Lowrider S and the ST models that that are really performance driven all have the largest displacement that's offered from the factory but i feel like that dilutes the appeal of the cvos and the cvo buyers that are paying over forty thousand dollars for these motorcycles i feel like the cvos should always be at the highest displacement offered in the lineup i know this isn't the first time harley's done this before back around the 15 and 16 model year we saw the fat boy s the slim s and then the lowrider s which all had the 110 cubic inch which all the cvos at the time were 110 cubic inches when they were running the twin cam then in 17, the Milwaukee 8 came out. But I didn't necessarily agree with it then, and I don't necessarily agree with it now. But you know what? It is what it is. That being said, the CVOs still have a truckload of additional features and premium controls and audio options and accessories and heated seats and grips and things like that that still do definitely justify the price. So for the controls this year, the foot and hand controls, we have the Kahuna Collection. The Kahuna Collection, I believe Harley-Davidson's been running now for about three years. It's a foot and hand control collection that I 
still really, really like. It's one of these timeless styles that I don't think will be fading anytime soon. The CVOs come with a headset. This year in the parts and accessory catalog, we did see new headsets come out. I don't really know which headset comes with these bikes. I should probably know that if I'm gonna be yakking about it on YouTube, but I would assume that the CVOs this year come with one of the brand new headsets that was released out of the PA catalog this year. The Street Glide has the Fugitive wheel, which I believe was first introduced in the 2020 model year. So this is the third model year in a row they've been running the Fugitive 19 inch wheel on the Street Glide. And on the Road Glide, of course, you've got the 21 inch front wheel that the Road Glide CVO has become so popular for. Last year, we saw this two piece laced wheel that was introduced on the CVO Road Glide. So that's back now for the second year on the CVO Road Glide. On the Road Glide Limited CVO, we see the Tomahawk wheels, which were introduced on the CVO Ultra Limited, I want to say a couple years ago. But on the Road Glide Limited CVO, you also enjoy things like the heated seats. I believe now all of the bikes have the Kahuna Collection heated grips. And honestly, there's so many small details on these bikes that it would take me forever to name them all off. Just little details like on the dash, on the bezels, on the boot up screen of the infotainment system, the brake calipers. The finish on the engine casing is like this gray tone as well. Things like your mirrors and your windshield. The seats all have an extra level of detail in them. The Road Glide Limited has additional padding in the rider and passenger seats. Another really big upgrade that just happened last year for the Street Glide and the Road Glide is you have the Rockford Fosgates Boom Audio Stage 2 speakers, which absolutely bump. They're definitely an improvement over the 2020 model year and earlier Stage 2 Boom Audio stuff. The CVO Road Glide Limited got the Rockford Fosgate Stage 1 speakers, so not quite as loud, but you do have the benefit of having the Rockford stuff. All in all, guys, the parts and the engine and a lot of the significant parts that make up the CVOs really didn't have many changes this year. You have a lot of cosmetic changes. And on that note, let's jump into the paint here. So let's start off first here with the CVO Street Glide. The first color here is called Blue Steel. This is my personal favorite color on both this bike and the Road Glide. You've also got a scorched chrome on here, which is a really cool, like smoky chrome finish on everything, like the engine casings and the primary and everything. The next color is called Envious Green Fade. You've got this green color base with like these black flames that fade as it gets to the back. I will say guys, the craftsmanship and the level of artist execution on these bikes is as good as we've ever seen on the CVOs. They did an incredible job on the paint. This next one is called Hytel Yellow. This is one of the paint jobs that you pay an additional $3,000 to do. And I believe the difference here is some of the paint jobs were done by Gunslinger. And as you can see in the video here, it's like all hand pinstriped and a lot of like hand laid graphics. And just the level of labor that's involved in some of the paint jobs this year is just like, you know, incredible. It's like world class craftsmanship stuff. So the Hytel Yellow is is one that you pay a $3,000 premium on the bike. So now let's move over to the CVO Road Glide. Two of the three colors are the same colors that are available on the CVO Street Glide, and those two colors are the Envious Green Fade and also the Blue Steel. The Blue Steel on the Road Glide, I noticed it also changes the color on the wheels as well, which I think is a really cool touch. And depending on what color you get, there's like different stitch patterns in the seat and small details like that. But here's a shot of the Blue Steel. This is probably my favorite CVO of the model year, the Blue Steel CVO Road Glide. And the next color we got here is the Wicked Orange Pearl. So this is the second of the two paint sets that you pay an additional $3,000 for. So MSRP on the CVO Road Glide is $41,899. So if you get it within the Wicked Orange Pearl, you're now paying $44,899. So the Wicked Orange Pearl and the Hytel Yellow are the two paint sets that you can expect to be paying a $3,000 upcharge to get. So let's move on now to the CVO Road Road Glide Limited. So the Road Glide Limited has both of those ultra premium paint sets that I talked about earlier. The Hytel Yellow Pearl, which again, you pay $3,000 extra for, and the Wicked Orange Pearl, which is the other one, which I'm assuming has such a high level of detail and just an incredible amount of labor to do that paint set. The third paint option on here is called Dante's Red Fade. So you've got like a red base with a black flame that goes back and all fades to black near the back, which I think is an incredible paint effect on here. It just the, the fading is such a cool technique that looks just very seamless. I mean, without even pointing it out, most people wouldn't even notice that it's actually fading back there. And this Dante's red flame is only shared by one other bike, and that is the CVO trike. So let's move on to the CVO tri-glide here. So the Dante's red fade is the one and only color option that's available on the CVO tri-glide this year. The past two model years, they've had two color options, which is still limited to the typical three they offer on most models. But this year we have the one and you have 
put in the chrome finishes on all the engine trim and everything. Last year we had a black trim option on the scorched crimson paint set and then we had the chrome on the sunrise fade I think is what it was called. But you got the tomahawk wheels which look really sharp on this bike. The kahuna collection like I already mentioned. CVO triglide is one badass trike that's for sure. So that pretty much sums up all the bikes that were announced on January 26th guys. All in all I'm really happy about this model year. I'm really excited about the new bikes and everything. At the end of the model launch video they also hinted at future bikes as well. I'm sure they will have some mid model year releases as well. Last year they had the Pan America and the Sportster S which were two huge bikes. They also had the Arctic Blast which is a new paint set and they had the Icons collection last year. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a few new things along the way during the model year as well. In the teaser that we got at the end of the launch video it looks like there's a bike on the Revolution Max platform that will be coming out this model year as well. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think the bike's going to be. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you on the next video. Make sure you hit that like button. As always if you have any questions on anything or details you feel like I left out or if you need to correct me please leave it in the comments below. I'm definitely not perfect here guys so if I said something that was wrong please let me know and I'll pin your comment so I can correct myself in the comment section. As these bikes start rolling into the dealership I'll be taking them out test riding them going through them individually in more detail in, in future videos so be looking out for that. If you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button to support the channel and keep the Harley Davidson content coming your way. If you're looking for a bike in Southern California hit us up here at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson where we have absolutely no added dealer markup no dealer fees of any type and we'd love to earn your business. Thanks a lot for watching guys always appreciate it. Later.